So welcome back to War Gear Reviews for day two of the Qualcomm Snapdragon Tech Summit. And today they unleashed the Super Snapdragon 855. And I'm not gonna bore you to death with all the tech specs and stuff like that. I'm just gonna tell you what's new and what are the main improvements that you're gonna see with this new flagship processor from Qualcomm. So don't go anywhere. Right, so the sun's getting real low out here, so don't get too mad at me for not going into too much depth about the specs and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, I'll have some information on my website so you can go check that out if you want. But anyway, let's kick this off. So the first biggest new improvement is the fact that they've actually upgraded every single core on this processor, which makes this version of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 45% faster than the previous version, this year's flagship the Snapdragon 845 that you see in all of the top Android phones right now. A 45% performance increase. That is crazy. It's the biggest jump that they've ever had between the different iterations of the Snapdragon. So expect this one to be really, really powerful. So you tech fans out there will know what a GPU is. For those of you that don't, a GPU is what handles all the graphics on your phone. And they've actually improved this as well. So I mentioned every element has been improved. This one has been improved by 20%. So for you gamers out there, you'll be happy to know 20% better graphics performance. So expect some really, really awesome gaming phones in 2019. So another big change is the fact that now they're using a seven nanometer process, which basically means they can do more stuff in less space and make the processor much more efficient all around. So using less power, for example. And I heard this processor can actually perform seven trillion processes in one second. And I guess the dream is to have a processor one day that can perform just as efficiently as the human mind. But don't worry guys, Skynet isn't here quite yet. Although I did get sent an AI robot recently, which seems to be freaking my dog out. So maybe the most notable difference between the 845 and the 855, apart from the performers, is the fact that this phone will be 5G ready. So when 5G starts to roll out, you'll be able to receive the fastest speeds from your networks possible. And EE are already working on this in the UK and it's happening globally as well. But on top of that, the 855 will allow for two gigabits per second download speed on LTE. So LTE being what you know as 4G, that's about to get faster too. So that's a massive improvement. And if that wasn't enough, the 855 will support Wi-Fi 6, which means your Wi-Fi connections are about to get faster and more secure. So that's a good thing too. And the 855 also supports 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which will give you 10 gigabits per second. That's insane. So let's talk about AI now. So there is a new part on this processor, which they're calling the Tensor Accelerator. And without getting too bogged down with all the tech specs and stuff like that, all you really need to know is that AI on your smartphone is about to get smarter. And in fact, versus this year's flagship smartphones, the AI is going to be three times smarter. And I mentioned earlier that this Snapdragon is built with a seven nanometer process, just like the A12 Bionic, just like the Kirin 980. Only Qualcomm are saying this is twice as fast. But I guess we won't know until we actually see it in the real world. But they seem pretty confident about what they're saying. So when it comes to day-to-day -to -day apps, stuff like maps or YouTube and social media, stuff like that, Qualcomm have said they've actually compared this against their competitors. And in fact, it's a lot faster right across the board. Again, we'll need to see a phone in the real world to actually know how much faster. So stay tuned and maybe subscribe to What Gear because I'm probably gonna do a video on that soon. So there's been some significant improvements in the camera quality, and this has been done in a few different ways, but they've actually introduced the world's first CV ISP, which allows for better depth sensing. So basically what you're gonna be able to do with these new Snapdragon 855 phones is actually film portrait, HDR footage, and actually put Volker in the video as well that's crazy. I definitely would like to use that in some of my videos in the future. And with the enhancements with the AI that I mentioned earlier, they were actually talking about computer vision. So this is gonna make your phone a lot smarter at reading what you're looking at. And in fact, you'll actually be able to read. So literally read text off a page 
and put it onto your phone a lot better than it's been able to do it in the past, thanks to Google Lens. So there's this whole ecosystem built around the new Snapdragon 855 and this brings in loads of cool stuff from third party developers. So they were showing this demo of this guy speaking in a bar where it was really, really noisy and he made a video call over the internet and on the other end, all of that noise was cut out of the video so the person on the other end couldn't hear any of it and they switched back to the guy in the bar and it was super, super noisy. So this is done using software, and it's thanks to the Snapdragon 855, we're gonna be able to see this sort of low cut audio pass through, which is gonna be really, really useful for a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm excited about that. And there's a bunch of stuff involving the camera and AI, stuff like being able to change your hair color on the camera itself. But I've seen stuff like this in the past, but nothing quite as good as what they were demoing today. So that should be pretty cool as well. So generally speaking, the camera and AI together, you're gonna to see improvements in face recognition, scene recognition, the camera, photo quality should be better. They were even saying that phones now with the sort of processing power that they have, can actually beat a DSLR because a DSLR kind of has this fixed software and uh, can't do as much intelligently as a phone can. So are we getting closer to the days where camera phones are better than actual cameras? Let me know what you think about that below. And if you want, check out my video of the RX100 versus the P20 Pro. It's a pretty interesting video. I filmed it in uh, Game of Thrones land in Dubrovnik. So they were also speaking about a company called Archsoft who've developed this super low light camera functionality. Super night mode they called it and I'm really really interested to see how good that is. If you guys watch the channel you know I like to do a lot of camera comparisons and stuff like that so this could be really really interesting. And there's some cool stuff you can do within videos now as well so like for example, this video, you can actually get rid of the background and put in whatever background you want using sort of software to do it. But now it's possible to do that thanks to the Snapdragon 855 without a green screen. That's crazy. So I could literally film this video right now and put any background behind me that I want. That's a cool feature. And they also show some video footage of being able to freeze part of a video while keeping another part moving so that's pretty cool i wonder how i could use that in future videos as well that's a really nice feature there an interesting one so going back to the gpu you've now got the adreno 640 gpu which actually has this new image library physical image library the 1.1 vulcan so what this means for you in terms of gaming and stuff like this is you're going to have a lot more textures a lot more colors things are going to look more like a gaming console you're going to be able to play games in true hdr now with up to a billion shades of color. One billion. That's pretty colorful. So sun's getting real, real low now. Light is about to disappear, so I better start to wrap this video up a bit. So let's just talk about multimedia. So TV, movies, music, stuff like that. You're gonna see improvements here as well because this new processor will have the Qualcomm Adaptive Codec, which I actually made a video on not long ago. If you wanna check that out, uh, I'll leave a link somewhere. Uh, below this video and at the end on the thumbnails. Check that out, it's pretty interesting. So that's gonna be in there, which means you're gonna get a much more seamless experience when you're watching video or listening to music and stuff like that with your 855 device. You're also gonna have Qualcomm Stereo Plus. And when it comes to gaming and watching films, the worst thing that can happen is running out of power. The good news is Snapdragon 855 devices will be seven times more power efficient. So that's cool as well and the last thing i want to talk about with the snapdragon 855 is this xr which i think stands for extended reality so there's been massive leaps forward in what can be done now you're starting to see a lot more vr around the devices can actually support up to 8k 360 video so 360 vr videos hopefully will become easier to make and more readily available. I've experimented with VR since they first launched the first Kodak dome camera. I tried to start a German-Mexican wave when I was in Germany for the Gamescom. Didn't work too well. If you want to check that out, I'll link that somewhere. So when we think about augmented reality, where you can hold your phone up and look around as if you're somewhere else. So they had some demos of like a moon 
scenario or the Grand Canyon. So you can actually put your phone in front of you, walk around and see what it'd be like to actually be standing in a certain place. And this is really effective when it comes to sort of sporting events and stuff like this. So you can actually have like a sideline seat without actually being on the sideline, but getting that same experience. And this is enhanced even more if you've got a VR headset. So there was a company there called Next VR, who are sort of like the Netflix of VR, where you'll be able to buy, I guess, kind of tickets to events and sit front and center if you want with a VR headset on. And it's actually like you're there. And with these graphic improvements and stuff like this, and the ability to show higher res footage, it's gonna be getting closer to the point where we can't tell the difference between VR and reality. I don't think we're there yet. It's gonna be a while, but it will happen. So anyway, that's kind of all of the main things they spoke about today with the Snapdragon 855. There's loads and loads of detail you can look at. Some really good videos I've seen already, but they've gone into a lot of depth about the processor and all the different parts of the processor. I think I'm gonna do a little write-up on whatgear.net, so breaking it down nice and simple for you guys so it's easier to understand for you real real techie guys out there I'll link some stuff where you can go check out some real specific details on the Snapdragon 855 I am so excited about this I want to know really how much better is this than what's already out there and uh, stay tuned to what gear for that if you enjoyed this sort of summary of the Snapdragon 855 make sure you hit the thumbs up and if you subscribe you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man and an official what gear legend so hulk smash that subscribe button anyway guys turn on notifications to stay tuned for more stuff like this there's still one day left of the tech summit maybe there'll be some more surprises we will see but anyway thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one don't be late